3rd of Women's Day being celebrated on 8th March. We also know the Science Day is celebrated in India on 28th of February. But there is another day that is 11th of February which is the combination of the two called the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. And it has been initiated by UNESCO and UN Women in collaboration with intergovernmental agencies and institutions as well as civil society partners. The objective of this is to promote women and girls in science and to promote full and equal access to participation in science for women and girls. From this statement we understand we need to enhance and promote the participation of girls that is at the school level and also women in the college level, in the research level and beyond. And the theme for this year 2021 is beyond the borders. So, who has laid the borders? So, we are expected to come out of the boundaries. So, if at all someone thinks there is a border for me and within which I need to work in my science, work in technology and I need to keep myself within these limits and this is the day for you to think aloud and say there is no limit for me to explore science, you apply science in terms of technology and take it forward for the benefit of the society. Now, the objective of this is, so let me read it out for you, equality in science and society with a special focus on the value of the social aspects and cultural dimensions in science, technology and innovation to enhance sustainable development programs. So, whenever we talk about women or women empowerment, we cannot exclude their contribution and the interconnection of women with the society. And therefore, in today's focus is in empowering women in science, promoting women's participation for social welfare, for the society, for the culture. And women are actually the protectors of the culture, the cultural heritage of our country. And women's science and their knowledge in technology, their skills and ability in technology would certainly contribute towards the, the gross development of the society and therefore it is more important to enhance women's participation in science and technology for sustainable growth and development of the society and in turn the country. And this has to be the case at the global level and therefore we think globally and work locally with the same theme beyond the borders. So, in this uh, uh, connection, I just want to show this picture. Who is this uh, child? Perhaps uh, some of you know and most of you may not be able to identify this child. Now, look at this picture and this is a New York World Telegram which says, Dr. Einstein is dead at 76. The child Einstein died at the age of 76. Therefore, between the two, that is from his childhood to the age of his death, 76, you can see these pictures. Let me show one after the other. Any picture that you see, you are able to identify him as Einstein. What is the reason? Because of his uh, consistent contribution throughout his life. So, he lived with uh, science and he contributed to science and most of us know Einstein. Now, let me show this picture. Who is this lady? Perhaps 
many people would not be able to recognize this woman. Why? Who is this lady? What is so special about her? In few minutes time, I will give the answers to these questions. Now, we, let me just talk about gender bias. What do we mean by gender bias? And nowadays, we talk about gender studies. Gender studies include study of women, by women, for women and of course, we cannot exclude men from these studies. And we do have women's studies and also men's studies, where we talk about their contribution, how they empower working with men in the office place, how they assert in themselves, how they equip themselves and so on and so forth. It has a lot of dimensions to itself. Now, what is gender bias? So, gender bias is discrimination. The very discrimination comes in the discipline itself. Some of the disciplines are already stained as a masculine discipline. The discipline from which I hail from, the discipline I represent for sex is also called the masculine discipline. Why? Most of the women do not take up that option. That is the reason some of the disciplines like mechanical engineering, space science, uh, marine engineering and few others are called masculine disciplines and there itself gender bias comes in. But, uh, a good number of women have ventured into all these uh, uh, disciplines and they have achieved on par with men and they some of them have uh, even outsmarted men in certain areas and therefore, they have proved that uh, this bias uh, need not be given importance and this day the 11th February 2021 where we think of beyond the borders, we need to consider these women as our role models and come out, strengthen our wings and soar high to exercise our rights to learn science, apply science in terms of engineering and technology for our own growth, for the society and for the country. Let me just uh, place before you some of the women in the past who have achieved a lot. So, in fact, women's participation in science dates back to 300 BC. In those days, the women were not recognized. In fact, they were not allowed to pursue science even at the school level. And some of them when they wanted to read, they had to read using some books at home. They did not have social media, they did not have information. Information uh, was not available at home. Most of them had to depend on the schools and colleges uh, for learning material. In spite of that, uh, some of the women were able to gain access to such materials and they developed their knowledge still. They were not allowed to publish their recommendations, their research outcome in their own names and therefore, some of them published in pseudo names. Some of the scientists name we see, we think they are men, but actually they are women who published in the pseudo names. And some women, they were able to even set up a small labs at home and they started working in the unhealthy, unprotected environment and some of them had to lay down their lives for that. A classic example is Margaret Cavendish and she was working in this unprotected environment at home which claimed her life. Another example is Hypatia and she wanted to use the facilities in an education institution. So, when she went, they allowed her to use the facility, but they demanded a work from her. She was asked to teach, she was asked to do certain things for no pay. There was a discrimination. So, it is when she was teaching in her class, the angry mob, the society which would not permit that 
came and killed her with oyster shell right in front of her students and this kind of a heavy price uh, women had to pay. In spite of this, some women, they did not crumble when they were crushed. A few examples could be uh, the Herschel. Herschel and she was an astronomer and she discovered some of the comets. Of course, she uh, used the opportunities uh, because her uh, father was in the same field of uh, research in, the, in observation. And another person is uh, Sophie, who uh, she discovered the prime numbers uh, well spoken in mathematics. Another person is uh, Augusta Ada, the first computer programmer on whose honor the US Navy named its uh, computer language as Ada. Now come back to this woman and see. This is Meliva Marik Einstein. Einstein's wife. So, you read about her in few places. One I would like to quote is this, The Forgotten Life of Einstein's First Wife by Pollen. And you can read about her contribution in Einstein's scientific career. And she was more enthusiastic and more committed, more systematic than Einstein. And she exchanged ideas and she was Einstein's co-worker. And most of the writings of Einstein you see about her contribution. And uh, let me just quote, Albert referred to it repeatedly in his letters like when he wrote, quote, our work on relative motion, unquote. Such records are found in Einstein's letter where he himself has accepted, has acknowledged her contribution as co-worker. But in none of the scientific publication, we see her name, Maliva Marik Einstein. So, in addition, she, she had to take care of her mentally ill child and she had to forego her scientific career and she totally sacrificed herself for her husband and for the children and that was the case with even women who equally contributed and equally intelligent and on par with men. Okay. So, now what is the situation today? So, today a lot of initiatives are taken at the global level, at the national level, at the state level. Even universities, colleges and schools have got uh, what is called uh, women's cell and something equivalent to that to empower women, to educate women, conducting awareness programs. And even the government of India has taken initiative to empower women. There is something called STEM, science technology, engineering and mathematics. At the global level, various programs are given, funding is given to encourage women to excel in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. The government of India has also initiated uh, programs that Department of Science and Technology website if you visit, you will be able to see some of them. Just to mention a few. There is something called Women Scientist Scheme A. If a man has a break in service, she can always associate herself with a mentor in any of the education institutions and pursue her research. Funding is available for that Women Scientist Scheme B. That is meant for women in science to work on their science, use their science and technology and link it to the, take it to the community. This is something like campus to community uh, program funding is available for that. There is another thing called Women Scientist Scheme C. This is for conducting training programs and uh, workshops to empower women in science. And there is also UGC scheme for, uh, for fellowship for women, Kiran programs and a few other. So, I encourage the girls in school, uh, girl, the women in college and even women who have completed their research but do not have any uh, specific career 
to look into all these opportunities and, and avail such a fellowships and facilities uh, and empower themselves in turn empower others using their scientific knowledge. So, here I would like to also make a mention that in Tamil Nadu textbook corporation they have, they have published Tamil Nadu state syllabus plus 1 plus 2 books in all the plus 1 plus 2 science books you will be able to see the career opportunities and web links are also given especially in the 12th physics book you would be able to see the global initiative to promote uh, women in STEM and scholarships and fellowships to pursue higher education in STEM uh, availing fellowships uh, at the global level and also at the national level. And therefore, uh, I would like to encourage uh, women and girls uh, to make use of every single opportunity, keep the eyes uh, wide open make use of the opportunities so that you empower yourself in science and use your technology for sustainable development of the society and in turn we live the world which is of peace, harmony and women have greater responsibility. Thank you.